welcome your host for this Analog Devices webinar. Today's presenter is Matt Duff, and Matt's topic is Amplifier Noise Principles for the Practical Engineer. Matt, over to you. Thanks, Patrick. As Patrick said, I uh, am uh, Matt Duff, and I'm an Applications Engineer at Analog Devices, and I support our Precision Amplifier products, specifically our instrumentation amplifiers. And I'm going to be talking about amplifier noise principles today, uh, specifically those for, from a practical standpoint rather than from a theoretical standpoint. Um, since I have a precision background, I'll be talking from that viewpoint rather than, say, an RF or high-speed background. Here we see an outline of what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the difference between extrinsic noise and intrinsic noise. Uh, this presentation will mainly concentrate on intrinsic noise. Uh, we want to talk about the three main sources or of intrinsic noise, uh, resistors, amplifiers, and ADCs. Then I wanted to talk about why there are so many different units uh, that you would see in data sheets. Uh, you see nanovolts per hertz, microvolts RMS, microvolts peak to peak, uh, and how to convert between these different units, what they mean and how to convert between them. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, how to do some simple noise math, so how to add and uh, multiply different uh, noise characteristics. And then we want to talk about some tips for designing low noise systems. Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about is the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic noise. All right, extrinsic noise is noise that comes in from other signal sources. And some folks might even say that to call this noise is not really uh, correct because it's not really random. You, uh, you might call it interference or hum um, or um, uh, electromagnetic waves that are coming in. There's a bunch of different ways that people describe this, but at the end of the day, there are signals coming into your circuit that you don't want and that are uh, obscuring the measurement that you actually do want. And there's many ways that this can come in. So it can come in coupled through the input wires, especially if you have long wires coming into your system. It can come in through your power supply due to switching power supply noise or because of digital circuits that run off of your power supply, or it can come from incorrect grounding. So if you aren't very careful with your grounding when you're doing precision circuits, then your ground, which you think might be ground, is actually a little bit different than, than what you expect. Now, we're not going to be talking in this talk about these different noise sources. This is a whole different topic all by itself. But the thing to keep in mind is that if you don't take care of these this interference then the rest of the stuff that we talk about today is fairly useless because these external noise sources can easily swamp the intrinsic noise that we're going to talk about for the rest of the talk. So just uh, be careful with, these, with this uh, external inter interference. Okay, what we are going to talk about today is intrinsic noise. And that is noise from the components themselves. And this is the noise that you'll see uh, when you see the specifications in a data sheet. Um, in a typical signal chain, there's three main sources of intrinsic noise. There's the resistors, the amplifiers, and the A to D. And, and I guess you could count the sensor that you're using as well. Uh, certainly, there are other uh, intrinsic noise sources out there, say a reference or a D to A converter. But in the majority of, of signal chains that we see, it seems like these three types of, of ICs are the uh, main uh, contributors to noise. So now we're going to go talk about these different uh, contributors to noise. OK, the first thing to understand is resistor noise. And no matter how great a uh, components uh, you purchase, so if you buy the most wonderful amplifier, the most wonderful ADC, if you aren't aware of the noise that resistors can create for you, then you can totally mess up a design that otherwise uses wonderful components. So we can model a resistor as an ideal resistor combined with the little voltage noise source. So you see that VN there in that picture. So let's figure out what this VN is. Oh. So resistors can have two types of noise. Uh, the first type of noise is sometimes called excess noise, which is a uh, noise that's dependent upon how the resistor is made, so the type of material that the resistor is made from. So the classic example of a 
poor performing resistor material is the carbon composition resistor. I'm not sure if uh, many folks even use these anymore, but back in, in say, World War II, this was a common issue that uh, these carbon composition resistors were pretty noisy. Um, carbon film resistors that are still used today are, have a better performance than that. And then metal film resistors have even better performance. So you can split metal film into thick film and thin film types. Uh, and the thin film is the best performance. The excess noise, it depends on the amount of voltage that you apply. So if you don't apply any voltage, it's not an issue. And it typically has a 1 over F characteristic, so it's at lower frequencies, it's worse. Now, if you are using good quality thin film resistors in your design, as you should be, so if you're doing a precision design, you should be using good quality thin film resistors uh, for other reasons, such as temperature drift. Um, typically, this excess noise, you don't really need to worry about. At least I have not seen uh, this be an issue for any of our, of our customers. So moral of the story is, uh, when you're doing a low noise design, make sure you use thin film resistors and you don't have to worry about this excess noise. Now, the other type of noise is the intrinsic thermal noise of a resistor. And this is independent of type, this is independent of voltage, uh, and it typically has a white noise characteristic. Uh, you do need to worry about this type of noise in your design. And, and again, this is independent of type, so I think there's a little bit of confusion out there that folks think if I could just go spend a lot of money on a nice resistor, then I can avoid having noise in my resistor. And that's not the case. Uh, there's physics involved that say that if you have a resistor, you have this thermal noise. So you do have to account for it in your design. So let's look at what the thermal noise of this resistor is. Okay, so you can see this equation that we've got here, and, and one thing you'll notice is the square root sign, and the square root and squaring will come up again and again as we talk about different noise sources. So here's your first side of it. And the other thing to notice is that the noise depends on the bandwidth and the resistance and the temperature. So when any of these three things go up, then the noise of the resistor goes up. There's also a, a few constants thrown in there. Now, you don't really need to memorize this equation. Uh, it, you know, it's nice to know what the relations, uh, to understand that what's in the equation, but you don't actually have to memorize the exact form because there's a nice little shortcut that's, that's pretty handy. And that is that a one kilo ohm resistor has four nanovolts per root hertz noise. And this is something that, uh, I recommend memorizing uh, because this, if you're doing low noise design, this will come in handy again and again and again. And the reason that this little relationship is nice, this one kilo ohm equals four nanovolts per hertz, is because it scales for other resistors. So let's say you have a nine kilo ohm resistor. Uh, what you do is you just take the square root of the resistance in kilo ohm. So you would take square root of nine is three and then you multiply it by this four nanovolts per hertz. And so you get 12 nanovolts per hertz is uh, the noise of uh, that nine kilo ohm resistor. And that works for uh, any resistance that you like. Just remember to take the square root of the resistance in kilo ohms. Now, uh, I do want to mention that this is at room temperature. Uh, so typically when you're doing noise design and typically on uh, data sheets, everything is specified at room temperature. But just note that, of course, as you go higher in temperature, the noise of the resistance will increase. The noise of your amplifiers, basically the noise of everything in your system, will increase. So now that we've talked about uh, the, the how single resistors work, let's talk about a couple of uh, resistive circuits. So one very common resistive circuit is a voltage divider. And as we learned in school, the resistance of a voltage divider, so the output resistance of a voltage divider, is the parallel combination of the two resistors in the uh, voltage divider. And this works exactly the same way for calculating noise. So you take your resistors, you figure out the parallel combination, uh, and then you can figure out what the noise of the, of, uh, the divider is. So here in our example, we have two 200 kilo ohm resistors. Uh, turns into a 100 kilo ohm resistor. Then we use our little rule of uh, taking the square root of 100 to get 10, multiply that by 4, and we get 40 nanovolts per hertz. The next thing to talk about is uh, a bridge circuit for uh, uh, talk about how its uh, noise performance is. So 
uh, I've gone through the derivation here of the bridge circuit and its noise performance. But at the end of the day, and you're welcome to go through and look at, at how I did this here, but at the end of the day, uh, the thing to remember is that the noise of a bridge is the same as one of the resistors that make up the bridge. So in our example here, we have a 350 ohm uh, bridge circuit. So it's composed of four 350 ohm resistors. And it just so happens that as you go through the noise analysis and you ground the voltage sources and then you figure out what can be in parallel and what you can add, it ends up that the noise of that bridge actually equals uh, the noise of one of those resistors. So that's a handy little, handy little tip. So, for example, this 350 ohm bridge, uh, when we do our square root of th square root of 0.35, so remember we do it in kilo ohms, so we want to take the square root of 0.35, multiply that by 4, we get 2.4 nanovolts per hertz. And I apologize if I've noticed that as I'm giving this presentation that some of the symbols that uh, that were looked great on, on my PowerPoint presentation, for example, the ohm symbol, uh, seem to be coming up a little strange. So it seem to be coming up as O's, and it seems like the square root symbol also may be a little uh, messed up. So if you see that on your uh, screen, we apologize. I think that's an artifact of uh, the presentation here. Okay, so we talked about resistor noise, and the next thing to talk about is amplifier noise. So here we see an amplifier noise model. Uh, and we see a uh, voltage source and two current sources. And this is typically the way uh, uh, amplifier noise is modeled. So let's go into more detail on those voltage noise sources. So the first thing uh, about uh, amplifier noise is the amplifier voltage noise. And this voltage noise can be specified in a variety of different ways. So it can be specified in nanovolts per hertz, uh, microvolts RMS, microvolts peak to peak. Uh, so I've shown a little example from uh, our data sheet here. Um, let's see uh, what you can do with this uh, voltage noise source. So the thing to pay attention to when you see uh, noise specified is to determine whether it's referred to the input or referred to the output. And it's a very simple uh, equation between the two. So if something is referred to the input, it's at the input. If it's at referred to the output, it's obviously at the output. And you just uh, use the gain uh, in between to convert between the two. So for example, uh, in this picture, we've got an amplifier and a gain of 10. So if you want to figure out what the noise at the output is, you just multiply the noise at the input by 10. Uh, very straightforward. Uh, in most data sheets, most amplifier data sheets, the noise is referred to the input. Uh, and in fact, in op amp data sheets, they may not even say, uh, you may not even see this RTI or refer to input because it's just assumed that the noise is referred to input. It's, it's just so common. In other amplifier data sheets, typically they'll say, and occasionally you may see something referred to output. So an example might be a fixed gain amplifier such as a difference amplifier. So when the gain is fixed, then obviously you know that uh, the you can calculate what the uh, RTO is versus the RTI, no problem. I do want to 